Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Fountain Pen Showdown. I thought we'd do a showdown between a couple of what I refer to often as my monster pens, the big pens. So we've got Jinhao 9019. That's going to go up against the Ranga Model 5. You can already see they are big pens. Wait till you see the size comparison. So join me now down on the table. We'll take a look at the pens, walk through the bodies, do some size comparisons, some weights and measures, a writing sample, then I'll give you my thoughts and some scores for these pens. Welcome down to the table. Here we've got it, our two pens for today, the Jinhao 9019 and the Ranga Model 5. Look, we can see straight away. Although the Jinhao 9019, that is a big pen. Just look at the monster size on that Ranga Model 5. Let's start by taking a walk through the bodies. This isn't intended to be a detailed walkthrough of each of the bodies. I've got individual videos on each pen where you can take a look at more details. We're just going to really focus on the differences. I mean, the first one is the size. Obvious, isn't it? Second one, obviously, is the colour. So with the Chin Hao, this is a transparent pen. This is called Light Blue. You can get transparent ones, you can get solid ones. I quite like this one. It's got a really nice colour on it. We've got a clip. On there, we've got Chin Hao. Then at the bottom of the cap, we've got Jin Hao and Dadao, then 9019. On the Ranga, it's got this beautiful green stripe pattern. I really do like this. Very nice, looks nice. No clip. I do miss the clip sometimes because it does have a tendency to roll. So what I do is I have a pen rest that I keep on my desk whenever I'm using pens that don't have a clip. I do like the way that the body and the cap, they just float into each other there at the join. Whereas Jin Hao, we do have a definite drop down between the cap and the body. Let's take the caps off these. So with the Jin Hao, half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, nearly three turns to come off. So that's a lot of turns to take the cap off. With the Ranga, a bit harder to do this one because no clip, so we go like this. There's half, one, one and a half. A lot better, one and a half turns. Lay these next to each other and then we'll take a closer look at the nibs. Bit difficult to lay these close together because the size of them both they don't actually fit on the slots here so take a look at the nib we'll start with the Jin Hao. so this is a number eight nib so it's a large nib as you can see here hopefully the number eight nib larger than that number six nib on the ranga we've got a two-tone nib so it's predominantly a gold color there is a bit of that steel or that silver there as a pattern we've got the Jin Hao logo Jin Hao and m this is a medium nib with the Ranga, again, it's a two-ton nib. This is a Ranga nib. One of the beauty with Ranga pens, unlike the Jin Hao, where you don't really have much of a choice, you maybe get a choice between fine and extra fine nibs. They do their own nibs, which is what's on here. They do Yoho nibs, they do Bot nibs, they do titanium nibs, they do gold nibs, they do steel nibs. Massive choice of nibs. And you just pick what nib option you want when you're ordering the pen. So that is a big difference between the two. Again, with this one, two-tone, We've got there the Ranga logo, and underneath that we've got Ranga. And this one is a broad nib. Let's take off the bodies and we'll look at the converters. That spins off really easily. And with the Ranga, with the Ranga, there's lots and lots and lots of knots and lots of threads, as you can see there. Beauty of that, it is possible to eyedropper this. I never have, and I don't intend to, but you do have that option. It does come with a converter. The Jinhao converter, this is their new style converter, holds a lot more ink. Somebody has said it's 1.9 or 2.3 milliliters. I can't confirm that. But it takes a lot of ink and it fills really nicely. With the converter on the Ranga, again, standard, I believe, standard international converter there. Just pop the bodies back on. As you can see, all these threads. 
gives you a really good seal. Just going to leave the nibs exposed. Last thing we're going to look at is the section. Both sections are wide. I can't put them next to each other. I'll have to split them up. Both are wide sections. Both are very comfortable to use, very comfortable to hold. The length of both pens is very nice. We'll see that in a minute. The section on the Ranga, I would say, is about one and a half times the length of the section on the Jinhao. So again, if you like them longer sections, that's worth bearing in mind. Let's swap them over and we'll do some size comparisons. I've really struggled getting all four pens on my stand. These pens are just so wide, so big. Anyway, my standard size comparisons, Pilot Metropolitan and the Lamy Safari. You can see the difference, can't you? I mean, certainly that Ranga, that's a beast of a pen. But even the 9019, in terms of length, has got a little bit more length, but an awful lot more in terms of girth. Let's take the caps off. With the caps off, the length of the Jinhao is actually quite similar to that of the Metropolitan and the Safari, if you're going from the tip of the pen to the top of the pen, which is, let's be honest, that's how we use it, isn't it? But the Ranga, again, the beast of a pen, just showing you how much longer it is. Let's swap over and fetch in a couple of pens in roughly the same price range. The pens that I've brought in, I've had to fetch in another Jinhao pen, mainly because I wasn't able to find a pen from another manufacturer in roughly the same price range. So this is the Jinhao X850, 12 Aussie dollars. The Jinhao 9019, 12 Aussie dollars. The Ranga Model 5, 142 Aussie dollars. It's a big price difference in these pens. And the Conklin Durograph, 135 Aussie dollars. So as I say, as close as I can get it, they're priced. Again, we can see, certainly with the Ranga, a big size difference. In the hand, the Jinhao 9019. Just look at the girth on that section. Very nice, very comfortable to use if you've got larger hands. I think if you had smaller hands, you may struggle a little bit with it. With the Ranga, not as wide a section, but you've got this nice lip at the bottom. You've got a nice length and the whole pen just feels balanced. You can post both these pens. So here's the Ranga posted. I don't even know if I can get it in the screen. Let me see if go diagonal. No, not even then. It's a big beast. We'll see in the weights and measures. With the 9019, there you go, it will post. I don't think it posts overly nicely. Again, to me, makes the pen feel extremely back heavy and extremely long. Let's just pop the caps on these. Here we are, just a quick look with the caps on. This time, the X850 and the 9019, both are gin house. I would say they are more or less the same in terms of width against the girth. It's the breadth that is different. But that Ranga, you know, heads and tails above everything else. Let's swap on over and fetch in the rule of measuring. Here's the rule of measuring. We're going to start with the Jinhao. So with the cap on, 14.6 centimetres. Unposted, 13 centimetres. Posted, 17 centimetres. The width of the body, that comes in at 1.6 centimetres. The width of the cap, that comes in at 1.9 centimetres. Then the section goes from 1.3 up to 1.5. I believe this is my widest section that I've got on a pen. With the Ranga, 17 centimetres. That's longer than the Jinhao when it's posted. Unposted. 15.2 centimetres, then posted, hopefully this will all fit in, 21 centimetres. The width of the body is 1.91 centimetres, the width of the cap, 1.91 centimetres, and the section goes from 1.21 up to 1.39 centimetres. Let's move this out of the way and fetch in the scales of weighing. Here's the scales of weighing, starting again with the Jinhao. Full pen. 33 grams so not exactly a light pen body alone now remember we do have ink in this pen 22 grams cap 
12 grams. So nothing about this pen is light. With the Ranga, 46 grams, noticeably heavier. With the body alone, let's stop it from running. Let me just, I'm going to use the cap to stop this from rolling. 30 grams, and with the cap, 17 grams. The pen, though, because I think of the extra length, for some reason, always feels a bit lighter to me than it actually is. Let's move this out of the way and fetch in the notepad of testing. Just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming. Would you like to help support the channel? If so, please consider joining as a member. As a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out, and as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos. And then as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members? All down to us. So please, if you can, consider joining the channel. A link will be in the description down below. Here we've got the notepad of testing. Oxford optic paper, 90 GSM paper, nice fountain pen friendly. We're going to make a start with the Jinhao 9019. There we go, just give that another quick turn for you. So let's see how this writes. So we've got a Jinhao 9019. The nib feels quite stiff. I say this is a medium nib, but it's fairly smooth. It flows really well. The cost of this is 12 Aussie dollars. And the ink is by Dominant Industry. and it's a lake. So a little bit of an issue there. That might have been me. I have my hand at an odd angle when I'm recording. Drying times, there's a media. 10 seconds. 30 seconds, gonna go this side. Do you know, that doesn't seem to be getting any drier. I'm going to go on the line below. One minute. Let's go ahead and do a two minute test. After two minutes, wow, still wet. Very wet combo this. Let's have a look for any line variation. So here's no pressure. Just gonna do that again because we missed there. Gonna add in a bit of pressure. I don't put too much pressure on, but I try to get enough to see if there is a difference. Slightly wider, but could be more because it's putting down more ink. So there's none with, none with, none with. This is an issue we've seen here and here with this nib. I do get occasional hard starts with it. And again here, once it's going, it's all right, but leave it a few seconds and yeah, we, we do seem to get these hard starts. I'm going to move the mic down to the page and write a sentence. Here, not sure if it was the nib or me. I'm going to err on the side of generosity and say the actual issue there was me. Very nice, smooth pen. Not a lot of feedback. It glides, feels like it's gliding over the paper. It's not like it's an icy feel, but it's definitely it's gliding over the paper. So that's the Jin Hao 9019. Move the page up a little bit, and we're going to use the Ranga Model 5. So the cap off this as you can see unposted this is massive so we've got here a ranga model 5 with a broad nib price for this is 142 aussie dollars the ink it's also by dominant industry and it's also laid so the same ink so the only difference between the two pens is the actual pens themselves. Drying times, 
So we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Nearly dry there. One minute. After a minute there, nice and dry. Big difference between the two pens, isn't it? Especially when you consider this is a broad nib as opposed to the medium nib on the Jin Hao. Line variation. There's no pressure. There's with pressure. So again, slightly wider line. Fairly stiff feeling nib though. None with, none with, none and with. We'll move the mic to the page and do our writing sample. very enjoyable to write with got a little bit of feedback not overly loud but there's also a nice little bit of tactileness to it as well you can feel yourself writing through the paper so it's not smooth like the other one two very different experiences so that's a Ranga model 5 so what are my thoughts and scores for these pens let's start with pen looks the 9019 nice classic shape I enjoy this shape of pen. The nib, it looks a really good match for the body, so that large number eight nib really does match into the body and the size of the pen. I like the transparent nature of this material. I like pens where you can actually see through, so I like the demonstrator style pens. It's a really good looking pen. I'm gonna give it eight out of 10. The Ranga, this green stripe, again, I quite like it, what I struggle with is getting the patterns to line up, which is a shame, but that, that's not really something which is going to detract too much. I like the black, the fact it's mainly black, and then these gorgeous hints of like greens and teals. Pen looks, 8 out of 10. Build quality, again, no issues with either of them, both good solid pens. I've had the Ranga a lot longer, I've had loads of different inks in here, no issues with it always works, always writes. The Jin Hao, haven't had it as long, had it about three months now, so it's not had as much use, but even in that three months, you know, the threads work well, it doesn't feel any roughness. The only issue we have, I'm gonna stop that Ranga from rolling, <laughs> it wants to run away. The only issue I've had, as you saw, we've got the hard starts when I was writing. What I'm doing is between refills, is I'm taking the nib out and I'm slowly working on it with a shim and looking at the feed as well. So slowly I'm trying to widen that uh, gap between the tines and bit by bit it's, it is improving but I like to do things one small step at a time then use it for a while because that way I'm not going to really mess something up too badly. So build quality, still both good so I'm going to give them both an 8 out of 10. Writing experience, both nice to write with, as you can see with our writing samples. Both really put down a nice line. Very wet here with the Jinhao 9019. What that's going to mean is it's going to limit this for note taking. Because if I'm taking notes, I want to be able to turn the page fairly quickly and not have to wait two or three minutes after I've finished one page before I turn it over. So that will be lim limited a bit, but again, the actual writing experience, how it feels, is quite nice. Very smooth. The Ranga, a little bit more character to it. It's a big pen, so as I say, may not suit to smaller hands. Keeps wanting to roll off on me. There we are. Hopefully that'll stay still now. The writing experience with this, as I say, slightly different, slightly more feedbacky. I like feedback. For these, again, I'm going to give them both a good solid 8 out of 10. Ink flow. Yes, we've had some issues with hard starting. That's something I'm working to address. I've already spoke about that. Had no issues here with the Ranga. I'm going to be generous for the Jin Hao. I'm going to give them both an 8 out of 10. Comfort. This is where we get the slight different. I like the width of this. The girth is very nice. You know, 
I find with my smaller pens, it can make my thumb start to work after I've been writing for a few minutes. Not experienced that with this pen. But it's not overly long, and certainly not overly long when compared with a Ranga. With the Ranga, slightly narrower. I do find this a little bit more comfortable. I like the lip. I, I hold my pens down at the bottom, so I know my fingers are down where I want them to be because I can feel that lip. I do like the extra length. The extra length makes this feel really well balanced. So I'll say this is where I'm slightly differentiating between them. 8 out of 10 for the Jinhao, but 9 out of 10 for the Ranga. Value for money. Yeah, always the fun one, this isn't it. With the Jinhao, $12. What you're paying, you're getting an awful lot of pen. It writes well. It's got a larger ink capacity. It looks nice. Very reliable in the three months that I've had it. So, you know, little issue with hard starts. Not, it's not, but that's not something I can't address. With the Ranga, a good solid pen. Performs really well. You know, it's $145, so you can get nearly 11 of the Gin House for the price of one of these. Now, I don't take that into account when I'm doing my value for money. I base it on value for money for what it is and against pens in the same sort of price range. So value for money, because it's so much cheaper, and as I say, it's a good solid pen. 9 out of 10 here for the Jinhao, the Ranga, 8 out of 10. That means that the total score for the Jinhao 9019 and Dominant Industry Lake is 8.17 out of 10. And for the Ranga Model 5 with Dominant Industry Lake, that also comes out at 8.17 out of 10. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Aren't these big pens, aren't they right monsters? But for me, they're so comfortable to write with. I do like the wider sections and that little bit of extra length. What are your thoughts on big pens? How do you find them? Do you find that they're just too big to be useful for you? Or like me, do you find they're actually quite comfortable and nice to use? Please drop your comments down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like. Every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.